And good afternoon, everyone. You know, I'm going to have to respond to this article from Vice News. Patreon is bankrolling climate change deniers while we all burn. They say, look, there's an ice age. This guy says there's an ice age coming. I think Vice News mixed up full glaciation two miles thick over Chicago. That 100,000 year cycle, when I'm talking about a 400 year grand solar minimum, the sun's responsible for the electrical interaction between the jet streams and the magnetosphere here on our Earth that drive our weather systems. And they, they finally acknowledged that there was a mini ice age and they said, well, it was modest cooling. But when you look at the temperature reconstruction off the Greenland Ice Core Survey Project, we're looking at about 1.7 degrees Celsius, which is about three degrees Fahrenheit drop. Modern minimum, this low solar activity. But look at the food price spikes. This is what the channel's all about. And if you look at the Dalton minimum, you see the same exact repeating pattern. Incredible high food prices because growth seasons were shrunk and civil unrest followed. Now, USA Today put a hit piece out also denying the existence of climate change. I've been screaming at the top of my lungs for seven years that we need to get on this because the climate's going to shift too fast based on solar activity and our society is not going to be able to catch up. Rising food prices, societal unrest, an enormous amount of population migration. See where we are right now. Climate's always changing. You look at the tree rings, up and down, up and down, or you look at the drought cycle in California, peer-reviewed research no less. They label it climate misinformation, this grand solar minimum discussion, whatever channel's talking about effects of the sun driving climate on our planet, climate misinformation. No, it's not. It's science. Climate misinformation is when the experts claimed Arctic summers would be ice-free by 2013, oh, I mean 2015, the climate models, reality is the bottom blue heavier powerful cycles through time, temperature rises and falls across history, cycles within cycles. I guess they're going to confuse the reader by putting mixing and matching of ice ages, grand solar minimums, low solar activity. See, they don't even know what they're writing about in Vice News, so I'll have to explain it for you. Let's look at it and... See why your food prices are rising and what you can expect as governments move and try to control the populace as food gets so expensive as it causes civil unrest. Let's go through it all right here, right now. Investors could still see some of the strongest price action in gold this year, according to Wells Fargo, which sees signs of a developing rally. Money managers believe we could see inflation reach new levels that we have not seen since the Jimmy Carter era. For centuries, investors around the globe have turned to gold in times of economic uncertainty. Gold supplies have flipped from excessive to deficient. And such times in the past have sparked some of gold's strongest price rallies, unquote. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA. So go ahead and give the folks at Patriot Gold Group a call to discuss physical gold and silver. And the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 till present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. A few people wrote me and said, Dave, did you see the article they wrote about you in Vice News? And I said, Vice News? I never read that thing. Anyway, I clicked the link because it was about me. And yay, Vice News, I do give you some props. You spelled my name correctly and you referenced the channel correctly. And thank you for giving us all the free advertising and marketing across the Grand Solar Minimum Sphere. I've had a lot of people contact me, an enormous amount of hits on my on my YouTube channel more, and then a couple new people joining Patreon when you were trying to dissuade them to join Patreon and try to knock us off social media so we couldn't even have the discussion of why food prices are rising, what governments might do based on past cycles, and this whole thing about population migration. Oh, COVID, you can't migrate. Fingerprints of the grand solar minimum. We'll go right into that. But the whole thing is about this ice age. And see, right away, you know, the uh, Vice News doesn't know what they're talking about. If they're, talking, if they're putting ice age with any of this grand solar minimum stuff, because an ice age is this, full-blown glaciation, lasts about 100,000 years, 90,000 years of ice, 10,000 years, approximately, of warmth. And they call that an interglacial. 
Now the one we're in currently is called the Holocene. It's the latest in the last four. As you can see on this chart here, dark green means deep ice, red means where we sit in something similar in these 10,000 year warming periods. And the whole crux of my research and video production, podcast, etc., written content I put out along with all the others that are researching grand solar minimum effects on society and timelines is these 400 year cycles are seen through history in the collapse of civilizations in such a rapid manner. It's because food gets too expensive and is not as easy to grow because grow seasons shrink and the latitude at which you can grow food pushes further south. So some areas go offline. So this particular grand solar minimum targeting in anywhere 45 degrees north latitude and above is already starting to struggle. And the modern minimum is one of the most famous and there's an enormous amount of historical reference to this event. Now, I've linked everything in the description box below. I put about 30 different links to different types of climate reports, uh, repositories of climate charts so you can see how climate moves through since the last 10,000 years. I mean, such a bevy of information. If you go down that rabbit hole, I'll see you back in about two or three weeks after you pop back up and see all the information. I believe in allowing you to do your own research. I don't want you to believe me as we go through this talk here. Don't believe a thing I say. I want you to do your own research to try to disprove it. That's the whole thing about the channel too, is never listen to me. I present something, I'll give you the links, you chase it down. If it resonates with you in your telescopic view or your microscopic view, whatever, great. If it doesn't, then move on. And that's the way it should be for everybody. It's for debate, it's science. And for people to say the science is settled, it's not. That's, that's an anti-science statement. The science is settled, okay, whatever. So we're looking at the sun and those of you you know, you hear about the sun, but do you really get the scale and reference of it? Because they're trying to tell you that giant yellow orb there has no effect on our Earth. Now, where is the Earth? It's way at the bottom left, way left of Jupiter. So far down there, it's like a little microscopic dot that you can't even barely see. And they say that that electromagnetic Taurus wave has no effect on our planet, which is complete nonsense. I mean, something that large interconnected with you magnetically is going to have an effect. So I call this the fingerprints of the grand solar minimum. Going back through history, we'll go back the last six. So this is 2,400 years ago, and this would include the Homeric minimum right around 400 BC, the time of Homer. About every 400 years, you get these more intense grand solar minimums that have an effect on society. And you can trace it through history. What causes the collapse of societies and civilizations? And we can talk about Harappa and go way back into 6,000 years prior into the cradles of civilization. The land of milk and honey is now a desert. What caused the change? It wasn't you driving your SUV. The Sumerians weren't chugging around in uh, cars and, you know, the Hittites didn't have factories. So what caused that massive swing? You might ask that. So a lot of things to do with solar activity on the society itself. Why do you think so many cultures in the past worshiped the sun because it drove society. Lower solar activity meant starvation and famine and war. Fingerprints of the grand solar minimum are government overthrow, population migration, and economic disarray. So which of these are we seeing currently? Well, the economic disarray, obviously with COVID, everything shutting down, moving to cryptocurrency, the population wants to move, but they can't because they're locked down due to the vid and look what's happening with the government. We got the Great Reset. Everything needs to change. Are you kidding me? Really? You think that all this is just randomly happening and the forecast time going into a grand solar minimum, same exact repeating cycle, same exact repeating actions from government. Would you expect nothing less? They already know the cycles. In the grand solar minimums or little ice age, the intertropical convergence zone will move, which means precipitation will move. Are you seeing a lot of droughts and amazing floods these days? All through the news, that's a direct effect from this. Electromagnetic is the mechanism for the movement of cloud cells, jet streams connected with our sun to the earth. How do you think we have a magnetic field in a north and south pole? Also, Indonesia and North Australia have been greatly affected by these grand solar minimums. And again, you can see 
how the moisture moves or dissipates in the grand solar minimums. So again, you come down to the droughts and the heavy floods and they might say, well, it's CO2. I would say more it's a cycle in time that keeps repeating that's forecastable. But for sure what happens, let's just boil it down to the base minimum. What my channel, Adapt 2030, and all the others out there that are researching grand solar minimum phenomena and trying to show events that are happening on the ground with what's happening in society, it all boils down to this right here. The amount of food we can grow on the planet. If we don't have enough food, things get incredibly expensive and almost every dollar is diverted into food and agribusiness. The economy is going to collapse anyway. People are going to struggle for resources. They're going to fight for resources. And the citizens, they're going to go to the streets like they have every grand solar minimum throughout history in the last 2,500 years. Armies need to take care of them. There needs to be control of the citizens. Oh, you find yourself standing six feet apart out in front of a supermarket. You're allowed to buy one or two. They're already training you for this. This is the discussions they don't want you to have. That's the reason the hit pieces are coming out right now. And, you know, through my life, I've been told melting sea ice, melting ice, melting... And here we're looking at Antarctic sea ice above the 30-year baseline average. And they're trying to still sell us this whole thing about everything's getting warmer. Well, one of the big things happening in the Southern Hemisphere is, A, the mouse plague over in Australia that's wiping out production. New Zealand experiencing all-time record cold. South Africa, the same. The crops are being affected. So if you start to look in South America, this is the swing producer for the world. Brazil and Argentina add into the extra bounty, if you will, of corn wheat and soybean. Well, this year, because of different cold and drought patterns happening in South America again, they're not going to be able to add in what they normally would. So as we progress through the year with dismal harvest by the end of the year because of shrunken grow seasons, shifting jet streams, food prices are going to spike unbelievably to the point where we may see some rationing on items by the end of the year. Now I'm saying some items, meats, that sort of thing. But the wheat forecasts coming out of the United States is distressed wheat. It's going to be stranded in the field because of the droughts. We're seeing freeze events down across South America. And it's all about what stage the corn is in specifically when it's growing, when it has some damage on it, on the frosts. So if you start to mix and match all these different countries that are producers and what kind of weather patterns are occurring right now based on greater cycles, you can get a good indication on where crop losses are going to occur first. And if they're major producers, how, what percentage would be knocked out of that global yield? And then which country is on by from there? And you'll start to see the first amounts of civil unrest and price spikes in importing nations versus exporting producing nations. You, you can do this yourself if you just put, you know follow the cycles and start to put numbers together and really follow this through years and years and years. You can see the progression and trend. But here we are back to Vice News. The central tenet of Dubine's message is that the Earth is about to experience a grand solar minimum event that will usher in a mini ice age and reverse the effects of global warming. Well, I thought it was called climate change. See the mix and match? They call it climate change in a couple paragraphs, yet they flip it back to global warming when it's convenient for the narrative straw man. Yes, I absolutely believe we're coming into a new grand solar minimum that is going to rock the planet in terms of food production that is going to, with 8 billion people, create so much civil unrest. The elite are riding on top of this cycle. They know exactly what's happening. They have far better research than any of us. And they try to pretend like, well, we don't know. It's just happening. Oh, it's because of CO2. No. Their records... So imagine controlling armies and navies for 500 years and going out grabbing the best artifacts from whatever civilization, stealing them, coming back and assembling that to get a timeline because every civilization has kept detailed records. They always used to follow the heavens. We're the only civilization in the last 10,000 years that does not look at the stars and the sun. Edumacation, so we don't look up there? Perhaps. Because if the elites knew that this was coming back right at this point in history, why would you fix the infrastructure? You wouldn't. Why would you try to repair the economy? You wouldn't. Hence, a lot of repeats in history happening today, are there not? So then USA Today prior, this was back in what? May of 2021, just a couple weeks prior to the hit piece from Vice. 
Now what they write here is scientists said that the grand solar minimum, which reduces average temperatures by half a degree Fahrenheit or less, does little to offset global warming. Now wait a second. Did USA Today not even look to see peer-reviewed research that reconstructed the modern minimum global temperature drops? They only put together, I think, 10,000 data sets and put it in and made these graphs for you to look at. And I think the minimum that I see is 1.31 degrees. That's Celsius. That is far more than a tiny little percent of a Fahrenheit drop. That's upwards of what? Two and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And if we come all the way over to the right chart, this is a global top down over the North Pole view. Look at a 1.75 degrees Celsius drop. That's nearly three and a half degrees Fahrenheit. So where the dark areas are, are the places that went offline in production globally for crop production during this last grand solar minimum, the modern minimum. Dalton minimum was a light version of this. We're going back into a heavy one. So the dark blue areas are the target areas where you're going to see crop losses first, weather anomalies that make no sense, whether it's extremes of heat or cold, because the jet streams get bent there first. That's what's happening. And you knew NASA or somebody was going to have to come out and try to explain why the glaciers on Greenland are growing again. And here they are. Why a growing Greenland glacier doesn't mean good news for global warming. Wait, I thought the whole thing was about the whole premise of global warming. Oh, I mean climate change. I don't even know what to call it anymore. It was extreme something. They switched back. Nobody could remember it. It's been rebranded a couple times because it didn't fit what was supposed to happen. So here I sit looking at the largest Greenland ice gain ever recorded for any year ever going literally off the chart this year where they would have had to put a new band up there at 13.7. That's literally off the chart where it's scaled to for the gain on the gigatons. And then we find we're in the melt season. And how do we get these two gigantic spikes here? Makes no sense. You should be asking the same questions. And when NASA comes out to say, well, the ice is coming back, but you know, don't, that, just don't look at that. It's bad still. So back to this Vice article here. Burning of the fossil fuels is six times greater than the possible decades long cooling from a prolonged grand solar minimum. Now they are referencing the NASA article that was discussing total solar irradiance, TSI, and it dropped five down to what, 1360 from 1365. Now I will agree with that statement on an only basis of total solar irradiance. That's it. Nothing about the volcanic eruptions, the new cloud cells, the new cloud bands up in the atmosphere forming with increased cosmic rays, and all these other things that are happening with jet streams going out of flow, the amount of volcanic particulates in the air, an enormous amount of meteors blasting dust through the upper atmosphere, all these noctilucent clouds, and all these volcanic eruptions are reflecting sunlight back with all the sulfur dioxide in the air. So there's a direct relationship to a decreasing magnetic field on the sun to where Earth needs to re-stabilize or rebalance itself, and crustal anomalies are a thing where there's going to be more volcanic eruptions, more earthquakes, more mud volcanoes and slips, cracks in the Earth, where you're going to watch bridges go down. Pipelines are going to crack. You're going to see an enormous amount of infrastructure go down. So if you're talking on a single point of total solar radiance dropping temperature, yeah, well, I could cherry pick that data too. They, they don't even tell you anything about They don't mention TSI in there. They just say, oh, well, NASA says this. Where's the link for the article? I don't see it. I left you 30 links below so you can chase down all my information. And by the way, when we look at the last 6,000 years, you can see where precipitation has moved, grown, shrunken across the planet. And just a, a quick reference graph here. Now look at the repeating cycles of increasing or decreasing precipitation. This is not driven by you, not CO2, it's the sun. And this is the discussion they don't want you to have. So they straw man out these strange arguments here. And another one here. Even if a grand solar minimum were to last a century, global temperatures would continue to warm. Provided there were no volcanic eruptions, no new cloud layers forming due to increased cosmic rays, which is galactic cosmic rays. And you can check out Sven's Mark's work on how galactic cosmic rays increase cloud cover. If none of that were to happen, perhaps, and then the meteors and all this extra debris coming in and, and burning up in the upper atmosphere, creating also different dust layers and whatever. Now, if it was only TSI, you could say that's a true statement, but then they forget all the other effects that are coming in. And then this next paragraph here, but this has not prevented Dubai and many others from preying on people's fears about an impending ice age. 
Now wait, did I just go through this is all about this Holocene interglacial and the 400 year repeating cycles of the grand solar minimum, yet even at the end they're still writing Ice Age, Ice Age. And by the way, are you a media organization? That's a capital E on Earth's climate. Come on, really? I make my own charts and graphs too when I do this. So, you know, you can reference as it was in this Vice article, it talked about the 11 year solar cycle and that's great, solar maximum, solar minimum. A lot of people understand that. It's in the news, we're at a solar minimum and it's extended and it's not kicking off and they've revamped all the forecasts for how intense solar cycle 25 will be. But you can take it back in, you know, sets of cycles going back as well. So if you didn't go back four solar cycles, that'll take us right at the beginning of the satellite era. And then if you go back, it takes us the centennial minimum. But in the back of that chart there is the long-term temperature data for the last 10,000 years. Nobody wants to look at that. That is so inconvenient. And it, it dovetails right into climate data from, this is GISP2. This is a Greenland Ice Survey Project or Ice Core Survey Project, whatever you like to term that. The rise and fall of civilizations follows the intensity of sun, the increasing solar activity or lack thereof. If you can grow more food, you can have a prosperous society because everybody's eating, they're nourished, they have good mind function. If you don't have enough food, you got the dark ages. And USA Today here, I, you know, I'm not a fan of Zuckerberg in any way, shape or form, but I do give him kudos right here for saying, you know what, hey, 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 hold on. People talking about the climate, they can talk about the climate. But USA Today decided to put the word climate misinformation in there. But in true reality, why don't I just scrape it out and climate debate? Because science is not settled, never should be. We'd still be living in caves if the science was settled. All oh, that fireworks, you shouldn't, it, it will never work for anything else except cooking food and scaring animals. Don't even try it, it it's settled. This fire only scares animals, it doesn't do anything else. Cannot harness that, uh-uh, no. That's exactly where we would be right now. And the future of this planet is at stake. Report pressures YouTube. Now they keep coming back to this whole thing. This is a, a climate change denier is a thing they throw around like a Frisbee to, uh, you know, at a, to a dog out in a park somewhere. The climate is gonna to shift too fast for us to catch up with food production. There's gonna be global famine and we should have been talking about this, what, 12 years ago when they, maybe even seven, when I started to come on the scene and really do a lot of information searching about this. Governments at that time knew we were going into low solar activity. There's so many astrophysicists out there saying that. We squandered seven years with this kind of climate change denier because you don't believe that CO2 drives the climate and the sun drives the climate. That puts you in the camp of a climate change denier. Now see, who, who's gaslighting who, is the question. An advanced democracy uncovered about 4,200 posts with the grand solar minimum. Yeah, good, I'm glad it's getting more traction. It should, it should be a front page news article on every single news. But they talk about, you know, misinformation in the climate debate. Well, how about the misinformation of Arctic summers maybe ice free by 2020? You know, there's a, two, the first it was 2008, then it was 2009, then it was 2013, and these same players keep getting recycled and the same forecasts that never come to fruition. How about fact checking that narrative that never came to fruition? Come on. Can you, can you actually do the job to what you're supposed to and, and equally disperse that climate misinformation across all climate information? Oh, wait, they're with you on the new green deal, so they get a pass. I get it. I get it. It's all about the grand solar minimum crowd interfering with your money because people might ask a question about this Green New Deal and say, wait a second, those solar panels aren't going to be as efficient with the grand solar minimum. Now, are they? Did anybody do the TSI versus reduction in output on solar panels calculations? Green New Deal. I bet you didn't. Or I bet you did, and you know it's going to reduce 25% in output, so you don't want anybody to talk about that either. That is too inconvenient. But let's get back to another inconvenient fact here. This is the magnetic field on the sun interconnecting, interlooping with the magnetic field on the earth. That's how we have the aurora, the, the northern lights, southern lights. Magnetic field on the earth is coupled with our sun, directly connected. So when I saw that giant sun related to the earth in the beginning, now it's a simplified diagram here, but the sun and the earth have been stabilized pretty much for the last eh, 200 years, let's say. Equalized charge. Our crust is equal with the sun, everything's stabilized, everything's equalized. 
Well, what's happened now is the sun's stepping down in its activity. So what's going to happen? Our Earth needs to stabilize and release some electricity, release some electric current somehow. And it does that through what's called the global electric circuit. Eugene Bagashoff putting out this great information here. But you're seeing an enormous amount of electrical activity and storms in diverse places and rains and deserts and all these. This is exactly what is driving the cloud cells and the jet streams are affected by this global electric circuit. So as the sun steps down further, you're going to start to see more anomalies. That's what I'm saying. You know, the elite and these news organizations don't want you to talk about this. It's not CO2. It's not you. It is the sun. That is a non-taxable, non-control, non-narrative. You, you can't scare people with that, really. They're going to deal with it once they understand there's... They're not going to be able to screw in the, you know, low voltage bulb or get, you know, low flow toilet flushes. That doesn't work. What they wouldn't understand is, wait, maybe we need to come together with our community, start growing our own food, not rely on the supply chains as much and get together and be in a more pioneering lifestyle as systems break down. I think that's the way a lot of people would perceive it. But, oh, no, you got to keep the narrative going here. Back to USA Today. A threat to human life delays necessary policy reforms worldwide. Yeah, the policy reforms that would get us to understand the sun is going to really drop in activity over these next couple of years in 2024 would be the first maximum effect October of 2024 until the second wave in 2028. And I, I agree that information needs to be steered to more accurate information and Vice News is not one of those. Nor are any of these IPCC UN panels who are paid to continue to push the CO2 narrative. I mean, would it be too much to ask to let people have both sets of information and compare and see what seems to be the most correct and what happens through history? So it's not really steering the users to accurate information. It's more about suppressing your competition because of the billions at stake in the whole global warming agenda, retooling society kind of thing here, compared to really preparing people for what's coming. These massive famines are going to wipe out an enormous part of our population because we have not prepared. You know, and Facebook has been told, wait a second, anybody who's saying that global temperatures are not skyrocketing needs to be taken away. Now, this next global gain of temperatures over the last 58 years is zero. I don't really understand that because almost all of the satellite record data starts right here in 1979, which will bring us up to about 45 years. Maybe they just had a typo again like other parts they have in uh, different articles that I've seen. But if we do start from 1979, which almost all data sets do, that's when the satellite record began. So this, 19, this 58 years prior, like what are you, back in the early 1960s? I mean, charts to, makes no sense at that kind of date start chart if you're talking about satellite data. So anyway, this is off Dr. Roy Spencer's side. I pulled this just the 1st of July. And it looks like we're one-tenth of one degree over the 30-year average. So what happened to the whole two, two degrees Celsius runaway global warming thing? I don't know what happened to that because I'm sitting here looking at this University of Alabama Huntsville version 6 satellite data set showing that we're not really warming as projected. And see, this USA Today says, pushing climate lies. You know, that, that's borderline libelous right there, because you got all these astrophysicists and even NASA now reducing and decreasing the intensity strength of solar cycle 25. How these last four solar cycles have been decreasing in activity. What's going on? NASA even saying that we're coming into a low solar period of activity. And as we come back through, solar cycle 26 is supposed to be even lower. So I personally feel that the revisions that they've done already for solar cycle 25, they're going to have to revise it again down to around 50 sunspots average. And even if you look out at NASA's own data and NOAA here, what they predict out even in solar cycle 26 is a full-on, full-blown grand solar minimum, almost no solar activity after 2028. That's a few years away. Regardless, we should be talking about that right now and how much that's going to affect our society. 
Like look at these revisions down where they're already, you know, trying to cover their tracks. Slice this, slice that, reproduce it, repost it, and people can get away with that. Now Advanced Democracy, this is the organization that leaked that secret report over to Vice News. And they're all supposed to be about integrity and and if you looked at the interconnectivity of all the other organizations of the same players that are setting up these 501-3C nonprofits, they're all interlinked with the same you know, Silicon Valley head, Soros funded, left leaning. If you don't agree with what we say, we're going to try to silence you because you're in the way of all these agendas that we're getting kickbacks for, obviously, because one of their clients, I linked this below too, to go through and one of the uh, initiatives that they're pushing on the site linked through all these influence watch interconnections is the Green New Deal, conflict of interest, or stifling business competition, tortious interference, as I was told by some others, as well as defamation, slander, and libel. Hmm, those are the, those are the words I was told, so we'll see how that works out as we move forward. What do you think? So there were some signs in the skies here the last uh, year or so, just before COVID kicked in, we had the sun do something very strange. The solar wind stopped Now there was no solar wind and our magnetosphere puffed out. And there was an enormous amount of wow factor going on. And at the same time, there's wow factors going on when the sun's activity state steps down, the electromagnetic field resonance changes too. And the perception in both lobes of your brain or both hemispheres, if you will, changes the way you perceive reality. Now, have you seen a lot of new narratives come out to try to coax you back into what you thought you believed because you're finding yourself awakening? That's exactly part of this whole process of the sun stepping down into its low activity state. Do you think the World Economic Forum Great Reset has just occurred this year and last because they start to care about you? You think they really care about suddenly equality after the slave trade? Factory, um, in bondage, whatever you would call that, all the way through the early 1950s, destroying every possible amount of the earth in the last 400 years for corporate gain. And then suddenly this year, they're like, oh, okay, well, well, well we, we just want to change everything because we love you. Or do you think it might have something to do with the economy crashing, population reduction, and government would be shaken to its core because of this Lack of food that's going to be grown on the planet starting this year. You're going to see massive food price increases. They'll blame it on hyperinflation and, you know, Fed money printing or whatever. But the real causation is this. It can't be fixed. We're going to have to go through the cycle. And, you know, with the economy crashing, fiat currency is not going to hold its value. So, again, boom, digital currency has just evolved right now, too. That's a little too coincidental. You got the Great Reset. You got the digital currency. And population migration has been a big thing through these last grand solar minimums. And now... Nobody's allowed to travel on the planet anymore. Imagine that. So that's all three for three checked off the boxes of the last 2,500 years of the average thing that would happen during this time. So is it a cycle or what do you think's happening now? Should we be allowed to talk about this? I think we should. Who has the right to say that we're not allowed to discuss the sun? Or how temperature rose and fell over the last 10,000 years with no SUVs, the Bray cycle intertwined with... These grand solar minimums and other cycles amongst cycles. Why can't we talk about that either? I don't see any SUVs during the uh, Holocene climate optimum with the warmest temperatures in this Holocene era. What about the DeVray cycles overlapping with the Gleisberg cycles, the Schwab cycles, and the grand solar minimum cycles on top of these combinations and sets of five overlapping into Bray cycles, etc.? Procession of the equinoxes is all part of this. Then we have the grand glaciation cycles of 100,000 years. Interglacial of the 10,000 year, 12,000 year cycle is, is in this too with the uh, possible Nova events, which Douglas Vogt talks about. All this intertwining of looping of cycles, yet somehow it's only our fault this one time right now for a narrative to fulfill an agenda of only one-tenth of one-thousandth of one percent of people across the planet. Doesn't make sense. And see, this is what I think Vice News and Advanced Democracy don't want us to talk about. Not sure why. They must have a stake in gaining some revenue from it or some financial gain or else they wouldn't want the conversation to stop. And I'll say it again, you know, uh, Vice News, thanks for spelling my name right here and 
to spread conspiracies about an impending ice age, you got to do more research on what you're even writing. Hey, and thanks for watching. You can support me on Patreon where I do updates because I also have a farm right here that I'm sitting on where I do homesteading because these changes, you're going to have to start growing your own food. So I do some updates here and there about that. Beehives, the orchard, planting some, updates on the garden. In addition to the research I do with the Grand Solar Minimum. So if you found this information of value, Patreon is where you want to go forward slash adapt 2030. I run the mini Ice Age Conversations podcast as well. And I also work with my Patriot Supply. The two week or the four week emergency food supplies. These are Mylar pack that can last for 20 years. It's great to know that you have food in your home, gives you peace of mind. And you know, the food price increases, everything's gonna be cheaper now buying it than in the future. Now Biden Patriot Supply also has one month, six month and one year packs. And I've linked everything in the description box below. I hope you go out and do all the research. It's a great way to support the channel with My Patriot Supply. Anything you buy there, get a little commission from. Patreon as well helps keep me out on the farm here to be able to do the research. So all those links are in the description box below, along with all of the research materials. So I really hope you do your own research and appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of this and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.